Hey guys, Callum here from 3D Tomorrow. Today I'm going to do a tutorial for Tinkercad, which is a free online CAD package. So, what's Tinkercad? Well, as I said before, Tinkercad is a free online CAD service. Now CAD, for those of you who don't know, means computer aided design. Tinkercad is suited to beginners and intermediate users. Personally, I would really recommend Tinkercad if you are looking to get started with CAD and you don't have much experience there, as its methods will start you thinking about the best ways to create an object. So if you're interested, then carry on watching and let's learn how to make something in Tinkercad. Okay, so when you first log into Tinkercad, you will come up with a screen something like this. Apart from it won't be filled with all these designs, it will be empty. What you need to do is go to create new design and we will get something come up. Now in Tinkercad, the main premise is working with shapes and you can tell this by the large amount of shapes showing up on this toolbar on the right. The main ones that I generally work with are the box, the cylinder, the sphere, the roof, and the pyramid. So let's flick over to favorites. Now I've favorited those and they are all sat there. Perfect. Okay, so let's drag in a pyramid. Dragging is one of the methods by which you can control parts in Tinkercad. You can also move the part with your directional keys. And that gives you some more control on a single axis. Since you might want to move in varying degrees, you can adjust the snap grid down here, for example, to five millimeters. And then we move in five millimeter chunks and five millimeter steps on the keypad. Let's just move this one up out of the way for now. Now, since you can't see what I'm doing on the keyboard, I'm going to try and stick where possible to just using the mouse. For example, rather than rotating like I would the mouse like that, I will try and do this using the objects on screen. So there's the first demo. You can see that is one way where you would move around. You can also clip specific spaces on this view cube to get a very accurate view. If you have a bit too much fun moving around and you get yourself completely lost. Trying now, there we go. You can always return to a standard view by clicking home. Another tool on this sidebar that's quite useful is the fit to frame. For example, if you have an object selected and you want to just see that, you click this one here and it zooms you in to that particular spot. You can still zoom in further or zoom out further if you wish. The final object on this toolbar is this orthographic perspective view changer. However, I always work in a perspective view because that's my personal preference. Right, so let's drag in another shape and see what we can do with that one. So I've brought in a square and you will notice that it has all these little nodes. I'm just gonna fit it to view so you can see them better. Now these nodes allow you to adjust the shape and change it in each one of its axes. Let's make it a bit bigger on the z-axis and put it in with the pyramid. Maybe you can tell what I'm trying to make. Now, dragging a shape in is not the only way you can make a new shape in Tinkercad. If I am to click a shape and click here, duplicate, I will get an exact copy of that shape. Let's bring it forward using the keypad this time and do some more scaling. So I previously showed you linear scaling where you grab one node and you just drag that. You can also do this by clicking on the measurement and typing in the exact amount that you want. Now another type of scaling is uniform scaling where you click a node, click shift and drag and it will make the same adjustment on every axis. Let's make this one 30 on each axis and then we'll add it in to this shape that we are making. Now let's talk about the main operation of Tinkercad, which is grouping. If I'm to select multiple shapes and then click up here to group them, Tinkercad will combine all these shapes into one single shape. 
as you can see here. This object can then be controlled as if it was one single shape. For example, scaling up and scaling back down. But I'll leave it as it was for now. Okay, let's bring in another shape, the cylinder. Something I haven't showed you yet is the rotation function. So if I fit to view again, you will see these small little arrows that allow you to rotate around each axis, like so. You will notice on this rotation axis, there are little markers. The internal major axis, large rotations, and the external minor axis, which rotates in one degree increments. Again, you can click and type in the measurement if you're going for something more precise. As I mentioned before, you're able to change the snap grid and adjust more specifically the measurements of the shape. All right, let's add in this now disc to our shape. And now this time we're going to use grouping to instead perform a different type of operation, which is subtraction. If I instead change this solid shape to a hole, select all the shapes again and then click group you'll see that instead of combining those it's actually taken a chunk out final chance to make a guess of what i was aiming for with this and you may be correct it was big ben uh, quickly before i finish off i'm just going to add in one more shape to show you the last few things you can do which is of course delete undo and redo perfect let's change the name to big ben and then you can export as an obj or an stl ready for 3d printing so i hope you've enjoyed that video i've given you a quick tutorial in tinkercad I may do more of these in the future if the feedback on this is good and people would like to see this. If you did enjoy the video, then by all means, please like, share, subscribe, etc. And I would love to hear any comments you may have in the comment section below. Uh, if you do have any questions, then by all means, put these there too. See you next time.